Welcome back to In the Shadow of Fire, session number 15, Puzzle Pieces. Uh, last session, the group um, had a couple of um, back and forth with uh, Iskari Yanwi, the town to the south of them. Um, and uh, a group was sent uh, to investigate um, the strange subterranean caverns. They found an awkward biomechanical lair uh, with a number of the schism uh, within. Um, combated a couple and then very quickly decided that uh, staying and combating them all was a bad idea. Um, rushed in, rescued um, a hunter, um, excuse me, and uh, got the fuck out of there, uh, as they would say pejoratively. Um, also, meanwhile, uh, the sky ship uh, sailed off to the north um, and then decided to do a bit of a roundabout over a known combat zone uh, to get some investigation um, done. The elves' sight was not clear enough to see. The dwarfs bombard them in the sky and drop them out of it. Uh, the ship crashed, uh, basically, uh, according to the Twilight Knight, uh, who seemingly rescued Alvin um, Elfward out of the wreckage um, and has dragged him um, pretty much the majority of the way um, to back home before Alvin uh, reawoke. Uh, the Twilight Knight says that everyone pretty much died um, in the efforts. Uh, Al Alvin remembers seeing uh, Flitz take a bolt um, from a massive ballista and also Kevin fly off the, um, the crow's nest in the midst of the kerfuffle. Uh, he, has, <laughs> he has made his way back to uh, Kasari Yanwi um, pretty much by nightfall, um, and I'm assuming, um, oh, and then had a conversation, uh, with someone who, um, had already spoke to, um, the master of Kasari Yanwi, um, a very terse, uh, conversation, uh, not the first one, or the last one, rather, not the last one, uh, that, uh, Lady Alcantara would have in her dining room, um, Balthar was very blunt, um, in his statements, um, and very direct. Um, unfortunately, um, there wasn't an agreement that was made, um, and Balthar has stated that he is planning on pulling himself and one of the other merchant lords, and if um, Alvin is um, forthcoming, all three of the merchant lords who currently bring in a decent amount of the wealth um, outside of the baseline wealth that is brought in by the guild, the Monster Hunters Guild. Um, that's not to say that the guild can't suffice, um, it's just that the town has definitely um, received quite a, a handsome amount of um, support from these lords. Um, that said, um, yeah, um, Alvin's conversation with Balthar was pretty brief, um, but uh, item was left for Alvin. Um, and a request was left with him, um, a similar request to one that was put forth to El Contra, um, that being um, that Alvin Elford join the Foe Fighters, a secretive group which was originally brought to light as Leaf is a member, uh, acting a member, it is un yet to be seen so far as to say not an acting member, um, but this group is a secretive organization that is um, bent on making sure that uh, peace reigns in the Dragon Isles and the balance that is currently set uh, is not disrupted. I believe nightfall was occurring when we ended last and I said we were gonna pick up the next morning. Um, Can I just add a quick to that? What would it be? The last thing that you said I believe was that um, Cyril felt some sort of connection through the wound that he had to the creatures underneath. Yeah, it was more prominent when you were in the uh, strange lair, but yes, it does seem that there is some sort of tether uh, based on the wound that he received from the sliv uh, the schism um, that you had inside the can. Alright. Um, we'll go ahead and just pick up with the next morning. Um, and whoever wants to go, go. I nominate Alvin. You go see Lady Alright. 
Your twilight. We'll start packing some things, though. I nominate Alvin not visiting Lady Alcantara. <laughs> you nominated yourself. Do you open the box? Oh yeah, of course. I opened the box like before I went to bed. Okay, there are three three items inside. Um, first off, um, there is a uh, small raven's feather with a bit of dried blood at its tip. Um, there is a small piece of parchment, um, and there is an amulet. Uh, upon opening the am or kind of looking at the amulet. Uh, you can see that in the Elvish language, there are two interlocking uh, Fs, um, and uh, that appears to be the entirety of the symbol. Uh, there's a certain kind of radiance to it, or warmth to the amulet. Um, okay. Well, most likely, Cyril should be near Lady Alcantara. Might have him look at the items. I'll open the parchment uh, to read it. On one side it says, To my son, Alvin. Good luck. This will take some time. And then flipping it over, you see a bunch of different letters in all different languages and some sort of strange code. Uh, it almost looks like a word puzzle or a jumble. Um, and it looks like they've all just been kind of placed there at random, from what you can tell. Most of the languages you don't know. Okay. I took the wrong feed. Well, I think I know what this is. Okay. Your Twilight Knight's any, not too far afield. Any significance to the blood on the raven's feather? Uh, is you it can like make, a quill? You can make an arcana check. Uh, where is my character? Oh, I see Flitz. He's a character. You should probably go into deceased. I'll get, I'll get him there. Pretty, pretty good roll of 22. Um, the Raven's Feather is a specific kind of charm um, that is utilized to detect uh, the location um, of a dead body or a living body um, that has gone missing. Uh, basically, if the raven's feather is utilized in um, any kind of divination magic, um, it can basically pinpoint the person whose blood is on the feather, or on the quill point, um, pretty easily. Um, also, you would know that if you break the feather's uh, point off, um, the feather will continuously direct for one hour in the direction of the individual or the individual's corpse. Um, but it will only last an hour, so if you're not within an hour's walk or ride or whatever means of transportation you have in that search method, uh, you would not be able to find the body before the magic becomes inert. What's that watering, what's that stick called? With the watering, like when you're dowsing. trying to... Dowsing. It effectively, dowsing it effectively becomes a dowsing device for the person whose blood is on the feather. Fun. Your Twilight Knight's new, not too far afield if you wanted to ask him to request a meeting with El Contra or Cyril. Yeah, I would do that. Which one? So, I looked at the amulet. Any significance to the amulet? I'd like to investigate the amulet. Sure. I understand there's two, you said there's two X's? F's, letter F. F. Foe is fighter it? is your presumption. Ah, oh, yeah, okay. Okay, cool. <laughs> All right, and it's warm? There's a warmth to it, yeah. What if I submerge it in cold? Ah, oh, fuck with that, I'm not gonna do that. That's silly. Can I make water lukewarm? With your arc, <laughs> your, your, with your arcana check being as high as it was on the last yeah. one, you would know that this probably has some sort of magical something to it. Right. Okay, cool. Funnily enough, that magical ability is actually activated by putting it in cold water. <laughs> It explodes nice. like that one Star Trek movie that wasn't very good. All right. Um, Which Star Trek movie that wasn't very good? This into, into Darkness. <laughs> well, there's only yeah, one that I'll, isn't uh, very good that has an exploding thing that goes in water. But yeah, go ahead. Fair enough. <laughs> What's it like, Mercury or something? Shh, we're not talking about Star Trek anymore. 
we are talking about what you're doing. Which was? I'm gonna have my walkie-talkie send a message to, um, to Lady O'Contra and Cyril that I'd like to have a meeting I'll at the that. earliest convenience. I'll put that on the docket for oh, the series of messages that she'll be receiving. Um, who's next? Son of a bitch. Lee? Is Halo still uh, in the capital? Um, no, no, I would have arrived back. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Leap is uh, ready to go if uh, you are. Yeah, Leap, if you, what are you planning on doing? All right, uh, Leap is going to go talk to his friend uh, Elo because uh, he has not uh, seen him since, you know, they separated a while back and they each had their own little adventures. So, <laughs> so I would get up and uh, probably do my normal calisthenics, which uh, has, you know, jumping jacks and, you know, like push-ups and sit-ups, but it also includes a lot of, like, loot work, fancy loot work and footwork and hand work because, you know, you must keep your hands very... Uh, limber and uh, dexterous so I would definitely do all that and then I would head out um, and I would uh, go over to my uh, friend Elo's house okay heading to the temple um, Halo you arrive this is going to end with a meeting with Lady Alcantara with one of you isn't it <laughs> you arrived pretty early and would have been at the temple for some time you would have realized that several of your individuals have been saved by uh, Ulair um and also the assistance of Asher, uh, the hunter. Uh, looks like a number of them were spared because of this um, work. It seems that the schism were president, uh, Iskari Yanwi. Um, and um, you would note that um, your furball friend is present. Um, it looks like he has made it back alive, uh, but he has a pretty grievous wound um, in his thigh. It looks like something impaled his thigh straight through on his left side. Um, and uh, he's taken to um, staying pretty close to his wife in the kitchens uh, this morning. Yeah, I imagine I would have tended to his wounds to make sure he's feeling well and also like dealt with the emotions to kind of alleviate some of the pain he's feeling. Um, you know, that normal stuff. And I would probably personally be checking in with the fields for him to make sure, you know, okay. the operations and the food supply and everything is still okay at the temple. Okay. I'm assuming that's where Leaf would find me is actually out and about in the fields. Well, um, again, similarly to how I do with El Contra, we have a placement for you. So um, I know Ulair and Cyril still have directionality. Um, so uh, Ulair, morning, early, um, you know, um, Asher has um, left already. Um, you would know that that's the case. Um, he did leave um, uh, something. Um, with your staff um, and when they reveal it to you you can see that they have basically um, been he's refunded he's given you back uh, the payment uh, that he took for um, the job in Iskarianwi um, and then that said I fucked it up didn't earn it I'll see you around if you ever make your way out to the Akaskari look me up signed Asher sense of honor he deserved the money either way it wasn't his fault partially my oversight but you think about it for a second and you realize that if you were in his shoes and people had died on your watch you probably would have been in the same position Ex exactly oh no it's like i completely understand the train of thought and everything and it's still like he should have kept the money but like i know why he did it but yeah oh uh, man uh so I wrote down his companion's name at one point. Um, they are all dead. Yeah, you would have known that. I I exactly. Uh, uh, you don't need to know that they're, they're dead. Cool. Actrus and Imgrid. Yeah. Uh, no. Um. All right, fun fair. John's just killing everybody's followers, man. Yeah. Well, they're not my followers. They just happen to be part of the guild. They're like good hunters instead of my chaff that I get the command. Um. It's been it hasn't been long, but a week is to be had. Begin to make them preparations. Yeah. Um, others uh, 
your um, attendant, um, I can't remember his name right off the top. Uh, that fear? Yeah, he says, yeah, um, we've taken a list of the, uh, the folks from the temple, um, and, uh, basically everyone that was missing from, um, what we could gather, and, um, he hands you a piece of parchment with about 12 names on it, uh, the two that you just cited are already on it, and then he says, a copy of this has already been sent to the temple, um, Master Clothis, um, uh, Master Quothus, Fenfair, what the... you you see you see him you see him when he says it and he kind of looks at you and he says For a long time I have realized that my lack of professionalism might have caused some situations and I if, while I'm behind this desk, Master Quothus, I wanna treat you that you're supposed to be treated. You are the master of this guild, and I just want to make sure that our friendship and our past doesn't get in the way of the job. Um, before, like, there was, like, before he went into that, it was, like, looking like I was about to give, like, an abrasive of sort, and then I bring down my arm to, like, clasp hands, and you respect your decision. Doesn't mean we can't still drink after the after hours, but of course, um, he smiles and he uh, looks at the paper and he says, "There's just a lot of work to be done." Understood. I'm gonna go seek out Halo, see if there's anything I can do. Okay. For I'm sure what services he might have planned. I um, believe I uh, saw him not too long ago, fluttering by from the barracks, headed back home um, pretty early this morning should be back in town from the capital. Great, I'll go check in at the, ta- at the temple. Okay. See how Flaxus is doing as well. Sir? Yes? What are you doing in your tower? So, I would just like a little bit of backtracking. Um, when Halo went to the capital, he delivered what message exactly? The one you were supposed to. Okay, great. So the, the capital then knows about... Um, yeah, okay, great. Um, <clears throat> and was it delivered to Frederick the Untimely? Based so on... That based that on was what? Not directly. Well, real, real, real quick. Don't, oh, don't, yeah. don't, Sorry. don't exchange too much information because it'll be divvied out. Yeah. You know Halo was sent. You do not know what Halo was able to accomplish. Got it, yeah. got it. Okay. Well, he's then, then Cyril is spending the day in his tower sort of... Um, deep in thought, sort of mulling things over and uh, feeling uncomfortable about the connection. He's doing research about that, if he could. Okay. If there's any any notes about like the, any kind of linkage between humans and these or, or whatever, elves and these schisms. Every single time you start getting to book, you think about that and you're focused on that and you keep on drifting over to the map sitting on your table. Anything in particular on the map that I see? No. It, it, there's nothing. There's nothing there, but you feel like there's something there, and you keep scouring over it, and there's genuinely not, other than a network of caves and pathways underneath the uh, the narrows between um, here and Adrasi, and Adrasi and uh, the Adamant, and pretty detailed notes on where you presume more schism hives are. Adventure. So is the idea that uh, the Cyril is drawn to the caves, drawn back to that place? It's not so much that, it's what if something similar to what's happened to you happened to your father? Got it, okay. So that's basically what he's doing. He's just sort of deep in thought and kind of upset about all that. Yeah. Um, okay, before we get to the temple, I'm going to go ahead and uh, drop some... Uh, <laughs> Exposition on Matt. Uh, Yay. Matt. Also, John, before okay. you drop exposition, exposition on me, as per our side chat, I am taking a point of exhaustion. Okay. So, exhausted, you um, take court um, and begin your practice. Um, the Twilight Knight of yours steps forward and says, I have reports. The most important report is the Captain of the Twilight Knights has secured Nadrasi in the name of the Enclave. 
The bridge to the north east of Nadrasi has been secured as well. Defenses have been prepared for the entirety of the isle. Um, it is yours. Um, there are reports that a white flag has been thrown up on the opposite side and that an ambassador of Balanroth wishes to speak with the captain today. I will report further as to how that conversation, if at all it happens, if it at all happens, um, goes. If it's arranged to happen, tell him to inform me so as if I am able to, I might come. Of course. Um, secondly, uh, your guide, Halo, has returned from the temple. Uh, and I assume Halo has put forward the information regarding what happened, regarding what he was able to accomplish, right? Honestly, probably not. I don't okay. think Halo would have sent in a report when he returned. He would have headed back to the temple immediately to get eyes on Flaxius and okay. everything else. And He has left no report for you as of yet. Um, regarding the missives that were sent out to the capital. Uh, no direct communication has been had so far with him regarding the matter. It seems that he is more concerned with the matters at the temple um, as of late. The um, last matter is uh, reports come in from Alvin Elkwood. His skyship was brought low on the western coast of the Rended Isle crashed somewhere in the jungles to the west. Him and his Twilight Knight were able to uh, s travel uh, overland um, back to Kasari Yanwi, and Alvin Elfward requests an audience at your earliest convenience. Well, I might say I'd invite him for lunch, but we've seen how well that has gone. I'm just sort of like, I'm muttering that more under my breath than to him. Of course, of course. It doesn't seem uh, he, it, it doesn't seem he reacts to it. Tell him whenever he is ready, he may come. Lastly, um, an audience has been requested uh, with you by Aramis Tybriesh. That's the uh, merchant lord that is an Alvin or Valka. He says he would like to meet you for lunch. Wonderful. <laughs> Good code, John. Tell him that he shall be received. Very good. Um, and for the other um, merchant lord? What, for Alvin, you mean? Sorry, this is oh, me cool. actually asking. Yeah, yeah, for Alvin. Well, yeah, no, I just said at his earliest convenience. So whenever Alvin's okay. ready to come over, he can. Okay. All right. So, yeah, that's buzzed over through the uh, walkie-talkie elves. Um, and, uh, yeah, we'll cut to the temple real quick. I s assume, Dan, you make haste to the keep, right? I mean, shit, I kind of want to hang out till lunch. I want to see what happens. <laughs> you don't know about that. <laughs> so, don't be a dork. <laughs> but that said... Uh, I replaced the O with an I. But, okay. At the temple, um, Leaf, you arrive there, and they tell you that uh, Halo is out in the fields um, helping uh, those um, to the best of his ability uh, with the tasks that Flaxius would normally be performing. And as you're kind of heading back out of the temple to go and seek out Halo, you see Lair kind of walking um, up to the temple, probably with the same goal in mind, finding the fairy. Uh, <clears throat> Uler, my friend, uh, it's good to see you this uh, wonderful morning. It's good to see you too, Leif. How does the day find you? Uh, so far, it's all right. Actually, maybe it's not so wonderful, but I always try to keep a, uh, you know, a positive uh, attitude. And just for reference, if you've picked up at all what the colorations of hair and skin tone are, what those mean for uh, Ulair, currently I'm looking winner, so like dark hair, pale skin, and it means something. Um. Uh, that, goes, that goes perfectly with what I said then, because uh, you look uh, how I feel, you know? He's got his air buds in, he's listening to Manson, you know? <laughs> 
uh, I would probably uh, go and embrace him as a friend would do. I received the hug and embrace back. Uh, I have come to uh, speak with Alo because I have not talked with him uh, for a while, and uh, I want to give get him up to speed with uh, what is going on in the capital, and uh, you know, because he needs to know these are very Im important matters. What things that have happened while he was at the capital? Uh, yes, I mean, I never got to uh, catch up with him about uh, the whole Lady Alcantara, uh, you know, what she put me through, and, uh, you know, the whole... Oh, yeah. He knows about ism, but he doesn't know what, you know, everything that we saw necessarily. Oh, yeah. yes. I was seeking to get his advice on what I might need to do, how I should handle things. And see if he needs any help with any funeral arrangements. Well, yeah. uh, you are a good person, and that is why you are a good friend of mine. We will go together because I have already told you what I'm going to tell him, and uh, you know we can maybe we can have a have an early bite to eat or something. And I know he is working hard, so let's go. Well, if you don't mind stopping by, I just wanted to stop by Flaxius. It's how CEO he's doing and apologize to his wife for giving her dire news before they proved to be true. As you're, uh, as you're, as you're getting rid, rid of the seer side, you see um, an individual kind of like looking around um, kind of curiously. Um, you both recognize him, but not like directly. Uh, you think it's um, one of Cyril's pages or studies or sages or one of those fellows um, and he kind of looks over and says, Oh, um, Ma Master, Master Leaf, Master Qu Quothis, um, I'm looking for Halo. I'm supposed to deliver this? Uh, we're on our way to go see Halo. We can deliver it for you. Um, Save well, yourself the trouble. I, I can accompany you, I think, would be fine. And uh, I just need to drop it off with Halo directly. Leaf, if you don't mind me catching up, I'll you can show him to Halo, and I'll uh, I'll be right there, as I just say, stop in at Flaxius's. Yeah. Sprint, catch up. He seems he seems when you get in there. Um, if uh, Leaf, you're okay with Alberic, uh, the page going with you. Um, we. Oui. If you go in and check out Flaxius, he seems pretty chill. Um, he says, "Yeah, Halo gave me the dose of the old sunshine. Um, <laughs> doing okay." And. Uh, you know, um, sitting this close to the kitchen makes it a lot easier. And then you see a ladle just fly across and bash him in the head. And he goes, oh. <laughs> and, she's, and, she, and and his wife yells across from the way, you won't be eating all the food. You aren't working as hard as you normally do. There's people out there working hard who deserve it more than you. And he says, oh. And then he says, if I had my leg, I'd, I'd be able to wander into the larder when she wasn't looking. <laughs> Do you want me to pilfer you something while I go in to say, say my respects? Uh, I wouldn't have you danger, endanger your life. Whatever it was that fought you at Iskari Yanwe ain't as devilish as this woman. <laughs> <laughs> How's the leg, though? Any any residual pain? Uh, it hurts like shh. It hurts like the dickens. But I'm sure I'll be fine with the guide's assistance. Good, good. And well, here, course... let me uh, go apologize to your old lady. Fair enough. Um, and then, um, Leaf, you and uh, the page find Halo. Not hard. I mean, he kind of glows and is fluttering around out in the fields. It's not terribly difficult to find him. Um, Alberic immediately says, Master Halo, and hands you a note. I take it, thank him, and read it. Okay. Um, it seems to be a note from Cyril, and it's a very curt and simple. Um, it's states, um, Halo, I would like to know more details about your errand to the capital um, as soon as you can deliver them. Signed, Cyril. Strange that he didn't use the Twilight Knight, but that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, um... Uh, make an insight check. Yeah, that is really strange. Why would he want to keep information away from the Twilight Knights? You th are thinking it could be possible that um, 
maybe he's trying to keep information not only away from the Twilight Knights, but also away from Alcantara. That's what stupid brain is thinking. <laughs> cool. But yeah, I will respect that and not uh, um, answer through the Twilight Knight. I will hand the note back to the page and um, inform Cyril that I'd be happy to join him for lunch today. Lunch is the new awesome hour. Lunch apparently. parties all around. Uh, you, you, you've Hopefully made it. Yours is happier than mine will be. You've made a trend uh, of things. Um, that's 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 good. Um, but yeah, um, to you, uh, Leaf and Hayden. Ah, Leaf, my friend. Um, hopefully, news from you is better than what I've heard from Vlaxius. Oh <laughs> uh, well, my friend. Uh, <laughs> I wish it was too, because. Uh, but I must tell you now that uh, my heart is a little heavy, and uh, there's a lot going on that I think you really need to uh, consider. And basically, um, this is me out of character. I would basically tell him everything that happened, pretty much what I told um, um, Uler, uh, which was basically, you know, that I, you know, I went there, talked to him, Cyril, like assisted. Lady Alcantara in um, probing my mind, which wasn't cool. But I would also say, okay, we could deal with that later because we have bigger things at hand. We need to stay focused on, you know, getting the town out well, of. He trouble. Here's a question too: Do you mention anything about the dinner that you had with her and her not apologizing slash whatever she said there? Just legitimately as a question. Yeah, that's a good point. I would too, and I would tell them that. I mean, you tried to apologize in your crappy way. <laughs> but, uh, no, I, I didn't say I apologized. <laughs> I said basically that I'm not apologizing for trying to protect the town. Like, in, in not so many words. Yeah, so I would tell him that too so he can see, like, her perspective. I get it, but it's not right. And so, but I think we can't really... We yeah, can't Halo really looks like a Jackie Chan meme right now as you're telling him, just like... <laughs> 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 my friend i knew you would feel very upset uh and so did uh Uler, but uh we must focus on the problem the main problem which is the schism at uh threatening our town but uh you know I, I do not agree with the direction that lady alcantara is going and and i will not openly support her anymore but i also will not work against her either that is a very noble position to take my friend oh circumstances were flipped and she had done the same to me I don't know if I'd be as forgiving but you're right there are bigger things at hand and I appreciate you prioritizing that um, do you have we, we won't be getting any support from the capital on that matter that's for certain they have plenty to deal with out west with the attacks um, I'm not sure what exactly we can do at the moment to be honest i'm just trying to make sure the operations keep moving forward here at the temple but i'm open for suggestions yeah can i do an out of character thing here hey andy did did uh Cyril apologize to me i don't think he did, did he? he did apologize did he? to okay, you okay i couldn't remember Absolutely. all right he was trying to make it right yeah okay that's right i do i that's why i asked because i didn't actually remember all right uh Yes, and uh, so did Lady Alcantara. She was the one that put him on to her, right? I mean, like using magic against uh, Leaf. Yeah, well, it was Lady Alcantara and um, Cyril were both trying to get information from me, and then the way it happened was Cyril assisted. And then he didn't realize exactly what Lady Alcantara was going to do, which was yeah, actually Yeah, but he knew something like, was he knew something was happening. He was just like so yeah. inflamed with the need to get that map and figure out what the hell's going on. They kind of lost it he, for a little bit. Yeah, I mean, he what he did wasn't right. He did apologize. So I would also tell um, Halo about that because that's important. You know, obviously, if you don't show remorse for doing something, that's like, horrible. So, um, so, uh, so I would definitely tell him. And then I would say. Uh, uh, Elo, I think what uh, what has to happen is uh, I have an idea. I think maybe uh, sound affects um, these uh, schism. And I think what I have to do is uh, do some research with uh, Cyril as much as it pains me. But, uh, you know, he did apologize. So uh, 
we could do this uh, research and figure out how we could best fight these uh, schism because they are too uh, powerful for us to uh, fight on our own. We need something. We need some advantage. We need something. I think our next step might be to capture one of these creatures. We need to study it up close and personal, and the only way we're going to do that is we have it on our hand, correct? Uh, I agree. And you know who attracts them the most? Cyril. They love his blood. <laughs> I hate to say it, but it is obvious. It is Ouch. I already have plans to join him for lunch today. Uh, I'm sure I could easily bring the conversation up with him. I can't imagine he'd be opposed to learning more about these things, considering his history. But, but uh, is... my, uh, my idea is pretty, uh, um, you know, uh, unique. And, uh, you know, he may not see any value in it. So, uh, you know, he, he may need con some convincing. I don't know. I've been considered a persuasive person in my time. I'd be happy to have that conversation for you, Leaf. Uh, I, I appreciate it. I, I'm glad that you also see the trouble. Obviously, you know, with the whole thing of uh, uh, the other town, you know, and all the, the missing people and stuff, you understand the, uh, the trouble of the uh, schism. Absolutely. And if their tunnels go underneath the entirety of the rendered Isle and they could pop up at any point, we, we need to get a handle on this situation, and I believe sooner rather than later. So the uh, miners will be very upset because uh, of... Uh, the mining rights, you know, to their land, and it's going to be violated. <laughs> Your priorities make me laugh, Leaf. <laughs> oh, just you know how I am. <laughs> well, I appreciate your honesty with me. Um, would you mind if I also had a conversation with Alcantara on your behalf? Um, I well, only wish to respect your wishes, but... I would like to have some words with her based on what you've told me, because that is quite concerning if she's going to act that way with citizens of our town. Uh, I mean, I think what I would like it to not be based on me, more like uh, her behavior. You could do that, and but I don't want it to come back to me, because I, I don't want her to think that I'm putting you up to this. You know what I mean? It could be more trouble. Oh, she knows I'm far too independent to be coerced into that. <laughs> Okay, because uh, like I said, we did have a dinner, and so it looked like she wanted to uh, patch things up, but uh, I was still angry, and I do not think her her apology was kind of crappy. So I, I, I don't. Mm. Or it was not the same apology as uh, as um, Cyril, who was actually said he was sorry. That's a, you know a huge difference. So. I agree wholeheartedly, my friend. Which is why the conversations I have with both of them will be quite different. <laughs> Thank you. I, you are a very um, you, you know, you, you have you have so much charisma that uh, you I trust you to uh, do the right thing with both of them. I appreciate that, as always, my friend. By about that point, Ulair would make his way over um, after, have, after having spent some time with Flaxius. But I am going to snap cut from you as you approach. We'll get back to you a lot in a second. Uh, Alvin, you make your way to the keep. Twilight Night Toe, uh, you're welcomed into the keep. And uh, you meet with Lady Alcantara, I presume, in her throne room. Uh, chest chambers. I would beckon. Uh, I mean, that's fair enough, you know. Okay. Probably be willing to allow that. Definitely not lunch. That doesn't ever work out. That it never. Really has. That never helps. Well I don't know why the heck these guys are inviting each other to lunch. That's just opening the door to disaster, as far as I'm concerned. Right, right, right. My I lunches mean... go great. I don't know what your problem is. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> Watch so. it ends up that Halo ends up coming out of there with like only one HP and one vitality. <laughs> <laughs> if not. Cyril has none, then I consider it a win. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> the two the two of you are in the chest room. Um, go ahead. I would gesture to the table. After you, my lady. Do you have a preference for color? Ah, uh, you played white last, I believe. I believe so. So. I will show you the hidden mongoose. 
sounds sexual. It does sound sexual. <laughs> sounds like it. Yeah, man. No, I should have the Queen's Gambit. It's more fitting. No, I, actually, I think Don't the Queen's think? Gambit is what I'm playing. <laughs> That's kind of what... Right. Yeah. Um... He says that sharply. I assume so. that your coming is in relation to potentially, uh, I'm looking for his name right now because I'm just Balthar. terrible at Balthar, there it is. In and relation Aramir. to my meeting with Balthar the other day. He made me aware of them. Not many things are going well as of late, my lady. I've also heard word of, uh, Leaf. Hmm. Well, yes. Why? Real quick, sorry to interrupt. Um, Matt, can you roll me a d100? Sorry, and then continue. Well, yeah, I was also going to say just as a character thing, in terms of the way that I typically play chess, Dan, I'm, I'm sure that there's like a typical rhythm that I fall into. Right. I'm not in that rhythm at all. And I'm very cutting and aggressive. Um, and then you said a D100, right, John? Yes, please. 16. Okay, continue. I'm <sighs> just taking your pieces. Just making you have nothing well hold on a second. I, I, this is literally i just kind of want to see as yeah, so 19 I, i'm a disadvantage as uh, yeah as the game gets in tight and close and you guys are feeling like it's getting towards the end and your conversation is kind of narrowed to this point where it sounds like there's going to be some sort of like actual dialogue instead of just the jargon of the game there's a loud knock at the door well, hold on a second. I thought we were like we were talking. No, we're talking. We're time. having a conversation. Oh yeah, go ahead. Cont continue on. For a it's bit. just Sorry. the the, ahead, yeah. the our conversation has parallels with the chess match. Continue. Yeah. Sorry. You know, Apologies, but we're, we're just role playing, John. We're just role playing. Go we're ahead. Not, go ahead. Go ahead. Not just play. Um, yeah. Um. Well, unfortunately, he's just an oddity to me, seeming to be a citizen who continues to get himself unraveled in political and secret matters what uh, secret matters did he envelop himself in as of late I've seen nothing out of sorts with him he's rather odd and queer but well as I said well, they are secret matters and unfortunately I cannot share all of them with my citizenry my lady uh, I'm not mere citizenry uh, and me being here um is giving you a great deal of consideration considering both of my compatriots are leaving this city to wallow in its squalor uh, there's not much left for me here I've lost my Sigurd I've lost my crew I've we've been uh, conscripted for matters I already had interest in as a, I'm no longer a citizen I suppose so I request answers well in regards to Leaf unfortunately I'm not sure I'm the one that has the authority to deign who will know or not know that you'd have to speak to ones higher up as for who you staying or leaving, I had hoped that there might be more to keep you here than simply prospects, but... Well, I have given a lot to the city, not just prospects. Keep in mind, you know, I didn't have to submit my ship to. Granted, they were upgrades but I did not have to submit my crew. No, and if you had had objected, or objections, I wish you had brought them forward. 
Yeah, there was no time. But I did what was must, uh, what what needed to be done for the city and its citizens. Perhaps there might not have been time, but perhaps if we had made time, things could be different. And also, like, you can just, just, again, like, I know that I rolled a 19, but yeah, just like, I'm making dumb, reckless, very amateurish moves right now. Right. You're distracted. Yeah. If you're getting to the close of the game, um, basically, um, Alvin doesn't seem to be letting up towards the end of it. Um... And uh, as you kind of move to a position where within a move or two, the game will be over, there's a loud knock on the door. Your attendants are not currently uh, within, as I presume it was as in the last time. All of your people were sent out. Well, yeah, but I had people at the door, so... Yeah, the door is being knocked on pretty loudly. Um, yeah, if you right. don't I'll, go... I'll attend the door. <laughs> I, I was just going to whoever enter but I'll attend it you open the door look at your boots the person standing your... the person standing on the other side of the door is your father's steward and he looks at you and he says a lady come quickly and turns and heads back out I just would look over at Alvin and say it seems as if bad news continues to follow in its own footsteps and walk out. The game left where it's at. Alvin, you kind of see at the end of the stage of it, you having played as aggressively as you were playing and knowing full well the game was yours. You look at it and you see that there was a counter present for her. She could have done something if she'd been made aware of it. She could have turned that game around and won it. And you realize you were being foolhardy in the game as well. You continue on through the keep and head through the Cherry Blossom Grove to your father's uh, location. Uh, the door is wide open. The wind blowing through seems to be chill this morning, coming off the, um, the sea. When you enter into the room, you're not alone, um, and you're not only accompanied by your attendant and your father. It does look like there are two other individuals in the room besides you, Balthar, and the woman you met um, before, strangely, who had come to address the uh, address your father in the middle of the night. She turns and she looks over at you, and Balthar kind of looks over at you, and you can see that he's kind of got a terse look on his face. And then he kind of looks down at your father, who is um, paler than you've ever seen him before. And there does appear to be quite a bit of blood on his lip, like it's brightly bright red. Why is this still beeping? I turned you off. Uh, because it just likes you, John. It wants your attention. Fair enough. Well, I don't want to mess with it. Um, hopefully that's time the, the volume going down will stick. Um, but... Uh, your father looks up at you. <laughs> Sometimes the malady enters into the, the throat as well. It seems I am not long for this world, child. <laughs> the, uh, yeah. the stranger, um, the woman, um, kind of steps aside and kind of places her hand on her chin and starts stroking it, kind of looking at the situation. Um, yeah, I was also going to say, probably when I entered, I would have, like, gone over. You said he was lying down, right? Yes. Yeah, I probably would have gone over and just, like, been, you know, like, cradling his head and all that sort of stuff. She steps aside. Balfour stays close. And um, as you kind of hold your father in close, he says, Thank you for coming so quick. <laughs> I couldn't leave you alone. Here. And he reaches over and he grabs a ring on his um, his finger, pulls it off, and then 
starts trying to cradle your hands to force the ring into your hand. It's... It's a burden. You know that more than anyone here. Hopefully... Uh, hopefully... Balthar's... <laughs> promises will hold. And hopefully... You'll be able to do something greater than I ever could. I feel like those are larger f shoes than I could ever fill. It's... It's growing dark. Grr. The attendant kind of moves in as well um, and places his hand on your father's shoulder. You can watch kind of magical energy kind of pulse from his hands. Healing I'm just magic. going to like grab his hand it just sort of like healing magic starts to flow from your attendant and you can see your attendant's face starting to like shrivel inwards as he becomes more and more desperate and you can see him kind of start to become more fatigued as he continues well, no no i was saying i was trying to grab the attendant's hand and like move it off oh like, oh sorry sorry um yeah I, 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 I yeah that's i wasn't going for my father's hand i was going for the attendant's hand and just sort of like Okay. Just sort of like, you know, like, I know that the time has come. At, it's just like... at first he's reactionary, and you can see him kind of, like, spiteful, but then he kind of gives you a look in your eyes, like, you can see there's, like, a bunch of sorrow and shame and a bunch of different conflicting emotions kind of welling up in the attendant's eyes, and then kind of just a, I'm sorry, like an apology in his eyes, and as you both kind of pass that look amongst each other and look down, your father's eyes kind of just become blank. Balthar looks to you and says, A lot of things were said, and a lot of things were done over the decades. I... I will remain here for a time. If you want to talk to me, you know where I am. And he storms out. Um, Balthar... He stops. Thank you for the friendship that you gave to him. He turns and looks back at you, and you can see tears kind of welling up in his eyes. Um, and he looks at you. Yeah. And turns and walks out. The woman, um, still present in the room, looks to the attendant. Leave us. The attendant looks at her, bows his head, and steps away. The woman looks to you. It came suddenly. This. It's been coming on for a long time. It just ended suddenly. Undoubtedly so. You are left with very little. And yet so much. I feel as though I'm left with nothing at all. <laughs> except for the burden. You do not have to shoulder it yourself. There are others who can help the burden feel less heavy. Your father... That's good. Go ahead. Your father always wished to carry the burden himself as well until it broke him. Others could help, but... who knows if they are willing... You know that you're strong. Others know that you're strong. What others don't know is that you can be weak. Your father had the same problem. It drove your mother away. It drove the one he loved away. It almost drove you away. Well, 
On the bright side, I, and I'm saying this as I'm standing up, at least I can be assured that today the only one remaining who loved me has gone, and I leave the room. As you do, you kind of feel this cold breeze come uh, in through the door that you're walking out of, um, and you can kind of hear like a chiming sound. It almost sounds like bells kind of ringing behind you, and you exit. Cherry blossoms fall heavily outside. The doors slip close of their own accord, the wind shutting them. Where do you head? I go back to make sure that things are getting ready for lunch. The um, attendant um, very shortly um, enters back in, but he does voice um, meekly, but you can sense a, a bit of courage in his statement. Uh, he says, I'm sorry, my lady, as you walk past him or move away from him. I just sort of nod and make sure that all the necessary preparations are begun. We we should be able to bury him at dusk as is his wish. Um, I will make sure that his body is prepared for his reception to the tree, my lady. Thank you. He goes back inside. The stranger staying in as well. Um, okay, um, you head off. Um, we're cutting to um, Ulair. You walk up on uh, Halo and Lee. Real quick, would I have been able to pilfer some food from the pantry back for Flexius? Yeah, yeah, that happened. All right, all right. So I definitely get him some food. All right. <laughs> A little bit of lighter stayed over here. <laughs> Not as heavy. <laughs> Ah, where? I believe we owe you some thanks here at the temple, do we not? Uh, I guess that would be appropriate in a sense, but lives are still lost. I fear I it might have been, been to an oversight of my own as well, but... I feel more would have been lost without your intervention, and for that, I can't thank you enough. Thank you. So what brings you by? Well, uh, Asher has left town and just seeking if you have any advice for one as young as I and trying to figure out how to run this place, this guild, how to rebuild, how to re restore it to grow upon what glory it may have had and also to see if you need any help in any preparations for the funeral. For those that were lost and unrecovered. I do appreciate your offer, but sad as it may seem, we've become accustomed to these rites around here in um, recent times. We are quite prepared for that, so thank you. With regards to the guilds, um, not sure exactly what you're looking for from me. Hold on. Real quick. How, Matt? Standing? Um, no, I'm... I, Twilight Knight. Actually, no, no. I am going to do it through standing, yeah. Tell him. Uh, so, Tim, <laughs> you just get a very brief message from El Contra, which you just hear in the middle of this conversation with Halo. Your father is dead. You just see, like, the... I, I just stopped mid-whatever I was saying, and... I... You can reply to this message. <laughs> <laughs> uh... I don't have a reply. I'm like... I don't even, I'm not even thinking in what to say. It's just like, I need to go see El Contra and I have a million questions. Oh yeah, no, 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 I know. I just, <laughs> I just put that out there as a bad joke. It was a great joke. Oh man. Oh, so happy that happened. 
Um, no, but yeah, but uh, with Leaf still there, Halo definitely sees this like sudden, complete like shift. And then uh, I guess the the message you get, I don't know if I have to say it verbally or not, but can we meet in person? Fuck! <laughs> As I realized that if I've ever, uh, I turned to my Twilight Knight. Can you ask the lady when we can meet? Um, sure. Let me. Uh, he steps aside and starts doing the Twilight Knight talk. I'm assuming. I'm assuming. As the Twilight Knight steps aside, uh, what did the lady send you a message? Um, Leaf's still there, right? Yep. And Leaf might not know the context of that, but Halo sure does. <laughs> You cut out. I actually didn't hear what you said. <laughs> Where's your head? Okay, uh, what was the last thing you heard me say? We heard you say your fa- or, uh... Literally, I think, like, just my or something like okay, that. Okay, so, I, I would say... My father's dead. And then I, and my whole big exclamation was like, Leaf might not know the context of that, but Halo sure does. We got that part. Yeah, Halo's, um... The color of his, like, halo and his, like, cloak both change to, like, a dark, deep, like, mournful blue. Um, you see his face drops as well. That is... concerning on many levels. Are you okay? I feel like... all I have is questions more than anything right now. When I, when I first found out of the possibility, it just led to confusion. And we've been so busy with this war. And gosh, what is that? Whatever Yonwei, down south. Um, there. It's Gary. It's Gary Yonwei. There's not been time to really process. I I completely understand. Um, can I can I help? And I hold out a hand to help ease the emotions. I and <sighs> Yulaya looks at Leaf says do you think perhaps I've relied on your comfort too much do you, do you think this has stunted my growth and kept me from maturing and learning to understand things better and deal with them in a more rational way friends are meant to support each other Ulair all I've done is support you if you think it's been too much, you are more than welcome to experience the depth of this emotion. There's a lot that goes into losing a parent, especially one you acquired just so soon. I completely understand wanting to experience it. I will not interfere. It's only an offer. I thank you for the offer. But no, I do not think this has stunted your maturity. You have led this guild quite profoundly over the last few years, and you've shown with your recent outing at Iskar Yanwi that you are rather capable, and you should not doubt your own abilities. Don't you agree, Leaf? Well, yes. Um, first off, uh, my condolences, my friend. I did not know that you had met your father, uh, you know, all, so much stuff is happening now, but uh, if you need anything from me, I will be there for you. And also, I agree with Halo. Uh, you do not, uh, you know, some people say a loving makes a person softer or whatever. That is bullshit. Uh, love is only the most powerful thing in the world, and 
uh, you know, it does not make a person soft. It strengthens them. It gives them inner strength. So, you know, do not do not uh, worry about stuff like that. I think you are, uh, you know, you are a very successful person. You just you need to remember that. Thank you, friend. The Twilight Knight interjects. Um, so, uh, Lady Alcantara has gone um, missing in the keep. Um, there was a, a request for um, uh, her to go with some clerk or attendant um, to the Cherry Blossom Grove. But beyond that, um, she has um, left or her, my counterpart, um, uh, and I do not know exactly where she is located. Uh, apologies. I uh, look to Halo. Go to the keep. And... That's what he says when you look at him. Just go to the keep. Before I forget, though, keep an eye on Flaxius. Make sure, Make sure he heals fully. I'll tell you more of that later. And of course, um, because I am purposely trying to lose Twilight Knight right now because I don't want him near me. I I, uh, I I walk until there's a spot where I know I can like uh, he, he, step away. He kind of doesn't actually follow you at pace, yeah. uh, kind of understanding there's something going on beyond him. And um, yeah, once you kind of dip away from him, it's not like he puts any effort okay. into trying to find you. Cool. And yeah, I'm I'm gonna go to the keep and see if I can track down uh, El Contra. Okay. Um, Will this what, be a nature trick since we're inside of a tree? Not at all. <laughs> So I'm pretty sure that he isn't going to find you. Um, and the first place he's probably going to think to look will get him into a side conversation besides talking to you. So that said, I'm going to cut from you folks for a little bit. I'm going to snap back to um, Alvin. Immediately after your um, uh, meeting was brought to a quick ending, uh, what do you do? I'm just sitting here at this chess table, man. Okay. <laughs> The, the time time passes. I mean, there's definitely a little bit of time here that's passed. Um, it wasn't instantaneous, even though we played it out like it was. Right. Um, there was some time there, but uh, do you still just sit and wait? Um, uh, no. Well, um, if you wait there for an hour, is that about right, or no? Would you have left before then? I mean, there's tons of books. Okay. Um, well, if you wait there, around the table. several of them about dragon chess. Also, I would note in that room in particular. Right. Um, if you do sit there for about an hour, as you're getting kind of uh, antsy and prepared to exit, uh, in walks Aramis, and uh, he sees you. Um, he's being led by um, Lady Alcantara's attendant, and uh, he says, "Ah, Elvin." I heard about your misadventures on the West Coast. Yeah, unfortunately. I mean, it, uh, it, I assume it was of some benefit to have scouted the attack on the capital, but... Yeah. Well, if you don't recall, you did give me a yacht some time ago. If a uh, fancy boat is uh, to your liking, I can certainly relieve mine to you. I probably will not be needing it. Um, my... Are you meaning to head to the capital with Balthar? Balthar was unwilling to tell me why he was wanting to do just that. He said he could not give me more information. And this is something he, him and your father did quite a lot to me. And I'm not terribly interested in dealing with. So I will remain. I serve as mayor under um, Lady Alcantara and her father before him, or before her. Um, if he ever returns to his states, then I will serve whichever lord rules in Kasari on me. The people need guidance, and they need an effort to work for. The war effort here seems to be going well in Alcantara's favor. Her win on the Nadrasi Isle is... Well, it was unexpected, to be sure. I assure you, if it had gone differently, I would not need much of an excuse to leave at Balthar's request, but... Yes, I plan on having 
a pleasant lunch with Lady Alcantara and hopefully um, making sure she is well aware that I am here for her to serve at her pleasure. Aramir, Tybris, The Rock. Aramis, yeah. You, tru you truly are the uh, stability this town deserves. I understand a lot is going on here in the Rended Isles, my friend. And I understand you've seen that the war effort is a deadly thing, to be sure. For this town to continue to run as it needs to, it will need people like us, men of character, to help them find their efforts and find their ways. If Balthar's secret reasonings for leaving are truly more important to him than that, then peace be upon him. May the bright star guide his path. Is Aramir by himself? I would gesture him closely. And He is pretty much by himself, but the Twilight Knights aren't too far afield. I'd uh, pull out of my pocket um, the amulet. It may have something to do with this. Your father wore that all the time. You finally were gifted your dowries. Uh, just before Balthar decided he would be leaving me. Interesting. He also left me this ring. Do you know of it? Uh, Did he ever wear it? Your father wore the ring all the time. It was his wedding band. I believe it was enchanted by a Altyrian. Do you know much of my mother? I do not. She was a very private woman. And uh, your father kept her in a very provincial and palatial uh, lifestyles in your current home. Fair. Have you uh, heard word of the schism? Officially, no. What of the excursion? Uh, Officially, I have no reports. Another matter I wish to discuss with Lady Alcantara at our pleasant lunch. But so far as to say, nothing out in the open has been stated regarding that matter. The, as they're called in more properly, the ancient ones are not supposed to be here or anywhere near here. How could they get past the bridge? I know not. Certainly a matter I would like to have looked into. Not that I'm suggesting you go out on any adventures yourself. You're probably a bit shell shocked from your last excursion. But as I said, if a boat is something you require, the yacht you gave me a decade ago when you first started your businesses should serve you more than enough. I do not wish to have a... Uh, to... I won't need it. I'll be too busy doing my job. But will remain yours. But for any matters of the city that needs attending to, it would be a great boon. Again, okay. at your pleasure. As you're both uh, sitting there, you hear kind of loud clomping, and you both kind of turn and look towards the door, and you see Balthar with kind of tears on his eyes, kind of walking past, um, heading out the door, or heading towards the the main exit of the uh, keep. Aramis kind of goes, oh. and then looks I can't ever say I've seen him cry. I've only seen him cry once before, at your father's funeral. What he do you make of it? I'm going to go and see if I can't catch up with him. Do you wish to accompany me, or remain? I'd put my hand on his back and then walk with him. The two of you have no problem catching up with Balthar. Uh, he's a dwarf. <laughs> Come to Alcantara, sitting by yourself, waiting for lunch, guys. No, okay. We'll get back. Um, we'll get. Yeah. yeah. Um, you catch up with Balthar. Balthar looks at you and says, "Forget whatever I said last night. Don't worry about it. We're staying. We're staying." Aramis says, "Oh, are we? I was already staying." 
You didn't sway me with your secretive dialogue. Balthar stops. Listen. Greater matters than you could ever understand are at play here, Aramis. And I get your loyalty to this place. I understand it. But the Isles are bigger than this town alone. But you're right. You are right. I've made promises and I've got to keep them. And that's that. Oh, well. villainy. Dang it. Sorry. I suppose yeah. we're going nowhere then. I'm not sure the capital will be any safer. You're not wrong. Good, I get to play Leaf now, guys. Silence. Screw yourself. <laughs> what? You would have been playing Cyril. I'd help you. May I join you uh, on your lunch? I will not. I have many questions. I will not presume to allow you to enter an engagement with the Lady Alcantara, Aramis says. Um, she and I had a meeting not long ago. It was uh, interrupted abruptly. Balthar says, I don't think your lunch is going to be happening. The Lord of Kasari Yanwi is dead. And that's where we'll cut from that scene. <laughs> Um, we'll move to, um, uh, everybody into the right spaces is what we're going to move things to, now that Andy's okay, ruined I'd like it to all. Say, I'd like to say, John, one thing that you need to do is you need to get some, like, really good sting music for whenever you do one of those things, because you do <laughs> it a lot. It's very narrative, though, like, it's good. Like, it's like oh, a... no, it's narrative, I'm just saying, like, you know, like, for that, like, sending it home emphasis yeah i do i do need like my own soundtrack and like one of those little cool pads that i can play with but alas this is a very low budget deal uh <laughs> that said um leaf uh Ulair, um Ulair, you split off from them and you headed up to the key uh halo and uh leaf you remain is there anything that i, I just, I just want to make sure i'm not cutting to the the meteor bits without getting you guys in first I'm not saying that you're not as important, it's just there is certain things at play here that'll be fun for Tim. Um, but yeah, is there anything you two wanted to discuss back and forth? Or... Yeah, just not brief, I wouldn't talk to uh, Ulair. Oh, Ulair dipped. He dipped? Yeah, he All gone. Right. Nope, don't, uh, I'm not worried about it then, you know. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you heard me tell him to go to the keep, and then he basically like did his Ulair thing and fucking disappeared into the well, fucking. Well, that's that's or a sound. He that, walked away, and then like. That's a sound point, Kevin. Can you make an insight check for Lee? Yes, I will. Man, not so good. What'd you get? Nine. Nine. Okay. Not good enough. Um, you, you're 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 confused. Um, you don't know what's going on. Um, they said his father's dead, and then Halo said go to the keep. You don't know who Halo's father is. Or not Halo. Ulair's father is. Wow, I'm dumb today. Uh, you don't know who. Don't worry. Uh, don't worry. I think it's assumed that uh, Lady Alcantara killed his father. Yes. <laughs> But, it's a, it's a jump, the uh, series, uh, you know, progression of abusing people and killing them. And then murder, 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 murdering their parents. Loyalty. You killed my father. Prepare to die. <laughs> um, uh, Ulair, I'm presuming, based on what was relayed to you, the first place you would be going is where you met him for the first time. That's the last known location. I'd be going there. Yeah, and they said disappeared, so I'd try to pick up her tracks. Okay, well... N n no, <laughs> you uh, go to the door. The door is uh, closed, but it's not locked or anything. You open up the door, and inside you can see that uh, the attendant um, is currently um, performing last rites and is preparing uh, the man you would call your father in linens. Um, standing over 
um, the man is a woman you've never met before, uh, wearing very um, uh, ornate um, robes, um, brown hair, um, very uh, autumnal uh, look, um, but absolutely very elvish. Uh, she turns and she looks at you as you enter in. Ah, so they did tell you. I, uh, Lady Alcantara sent me a message. Yeah, that's great. She's not present. She is probably in her own thoughts. What name did you come to? You... I, uh, Quothus, and I, uh, my surname I took on the one that raised me, Halo, Noddle Bay. Fair. Well, I will tell you that your surname before you were given away was Nadrasi, as you are a child of that island. May I ask how you uh, come by this knowledge? I am your <laughs> father's um, spiritual guide. Alright, real quick. Halo is supposed to be the spiritual guide of the town. And has been for the town since you can remember. Yep. He is. The prism serves the bright star quite well, from what I've seen from on far. I didn't say I was the town's guide. His personal guide. Correct. Since it seems... Why did he give me away? Because you were an embarrassment. Not you as a person. Awkward. But you as a situation. Your father was very much in love with your mother. He was not in love with his wife. Several things happened during that decade. Very quickly. At least to our elvish mentality. A bit of drama that could have caused the ruination of the town, to be true. <laughs> I did shave my beard, sorry. <laughs> this elf is fucking savage. Um, but yeah, back to the point. Um, she says, um, where was I, sorry, it was, I was saucing. I just forgot. Ruination of the town. Uh, it would have caused the ruination of the town. Your father, um, was very much in love with your mother. Your father also had a daughter not much older than you would be when you were... not much older than you. Uh, not very old when you were born. Um, definitely too young to understand anything that was happening. Um, but uh, she was born special. Of no fault of her own, of no fault of anyone's. Sometimes the fates grant people specific gifts. Unfortunately, some who are of a bigoted mind see these gifts as punishments, as maladies. Your sister rose to the occasion. And based on what I understand of you, you did as well. Less pressure on your shoulders, though. But you know what it's like to be alone. You know what it's like to be without anyone there to help you. Am I right? I've experienced that in bits, yes. Try ruling a town. The uh, clerk looks up to uh, the lady. Lady Melurio, I believe his body is prepared if you have the final rites. 
The woman turns and looks back to you. She doesn't need you right now. You don't need her either. You do want to go and speak to her because you want answers to your questions. Well, before I get into this ceremony and perform these final rites, I have some time. Ask your questions, boy. Is my mother still alive? No. What when she was her? forced away from Nadrasi, for as far as I can tell, she made her way north, away from the Isle, to the Adamant Isle. She was taken at Graniteville, brought beneath the dark mountains, and forced to serve against her will, as is the nature of those who reside within that mountain. She was worked to death. A slight darkening comes across my face. Um, kind of like, like, anger at being deprived of something I never got to experience. Um, like, I never got to know my mother, and I never have the chance to do so. Um, and, and as you're kind of wallowing through these emotional states, you can see that this woman, Malurial, is just staring at you, just waiting. Like, she's, she seems to be impatient, but she also seems to have the lingering, like, ever-present patience of an elf. Mm -hmm. I guess. One last thing. Of course. What was her name so I know what to remember her by? She reaches down into her um, pouch, pulls out a couple of different sets of beads and chains, and then kind of puts some back then away and holds one up and then throws it towards you. The beads appear to be jade um, and kind of um, like imprinted throughout. There seems to be maker's marks, uh, not too dissimilar from the mark on your blanket, but uh, different meanings, different connotations. It looks like this was made in happiness, this one was made for love, this one was made for um, uh, togetherness, foreverness, uh, this was made from a lover to a lover, and you can see your father's name, and you can see your mother's name, uh, which is in my notes. <laughs> Hold on a second, sorry. It's Steve! Oh man, why are my notes not working? <laughs> oh yeah, Zorana. And since she's from the island, she'd be Zorana Nadrasi. Correct. Right. Cool, cool, cool. You sure you do not have anything else? It'll probably be a very long time before you see me again. Or, if at all. All right, this is where Tim, the person, just like, all right, I, I've learned about my mother. She's saying don't seek out El Contra. I mean, I'm going to have, in, in a sense, like, what's going through his head is, like, he's getting more understanding of El Contra, like, like the barest hint of what she might have gone through. And it's not so much now a questions for her, but... Um, seeking out whatever family he may have. Um, uh, and there's like, he, there isn't, like, I don't know the quite, like, what other, like, that's forefront on his mind, and I don't know what questions, like, would need to be asked that this person could give. Like, he knows how she died. He I don't know. She just stares at you blankly, waiting, patient, and yet impatient at the same time. Yeah. A conundrum, to be sure. <laughs> um. 
while while Lady Alcantara might not need me. I would still like to offer my support if she, if she wants it. Do you know where I might find her? I would not tell you if I did. Let me make something plain to you. You think you've been alone your entire life? Imagine thinking you are responsible for your father's ailments. Imagine thinking you are responsible for your mother leaving. Imagine thinking it was you who was set up to carry the burden of ruling, to set up the burden of you defending the world you knew. She does not need you right now. She needs this to be ended in the most perfect and orderly way. Her father will be buried underneath the tree on the northern side of the grove. At, d at dusk. I assume you would be welcome as you are blood. So if you wish to linger around for the ceremonies, you may. But do not seek her out. She does not need you. You do not need her. Do you understand what I'm saying to you? Um, so, can I roll insight just so I can get the actual dumb person explanation without having to ask? You can. Attempt it. <laughs> yeah. Because I'm... Yeah. 21. She's saying that there is no... You are f blood. You are family, but family isn't about needing each other and being crutches for each other. Mm -hmm. That's that's something that you seem to be trying to do. You're like, okay. I need to catch up with my family. And she's saying, El Contra's not on that level. She's mm -hmm. not on the, I'm grasping at straws. El Contra's on the, all the straws have been taken away from me. <laughs> and this is what I've got. I gotta drink this pot somehow. I gotta <laughs> straw and allergies. I don't know. <laughs> Anyways, the f I guess you're muted. Final I'm so glad you're that. muted. I'm so glad. You're I got a cup of water in front of me, and I gotta drink it somehow without any straws. <laughs> right, water would have probably been better than pop. Um, okay. Um, um, how would you advise I best serve her? Your presence at the ceremony would probably be best. Um, but you don't need to ask me that question. You need to think about how you can best answer that question. How can you best serve her? What is the thing that harms her the most right now? The thing that is most dangerous to her at this point? You must know what it is. And you must deal with it as best you can. Do you have any other questions, boy? No. Thank you for your time. I will begin my work. And she and the clerk begin processing um, and finalizing the, the last rites on the body, making it ready for transportation to the northern portion of the grove for the evening time. Um, that said, um, I'm assuming you dip out into the keep. Uh, I'm trying to... How, how long until dusk? We'll get to that later. Okay, so <laughs> if there's time, then yeah, I do both. Okay, we'll, we'll, we'll mess with that. Good times. Leaf, um, you and Halo are still at the temple. No word has been granted to you regarding the matters of the keep, although you are aware that it's probably popping over there. Uh, are you staying on site doing your things? Leaf, do you have other business matters that you want to deal with besides the temple? I personally have to set up things at the temple still with Flaxius off, and yep. like, yep. I'm assuming that's going to take up all of my time until my lunch meeting with Cyril. Okay. If Leaf has any other questions or inquiries for me, I'm happy to attend to them, but if not... Does Leaf have any questions in town Leaf... that he wants to uh, investigate? 
Yeah, I think uh, Leaf, um, after he's done talking with uh, Halo, he's going to probably go back to his place, you know, and get all geared up for, um, you know, like entertaining and get get out on the street and make some music, you know, get with his friends, see the sights, do kind of like a tour of the town, see, take the pulse of everybody, kind of let them know what's going on, you know, okay. that bard stuff, you know, basically bard stuff. He wouldn't understand. Give me a uh, two rolls. I want to. <laughs> I want a perception check and I want a, um, a performance check. You should probably have a, an awesome check. Oh, I am going to. Uh, there's something I can do. Uh, it is something. It is a cantrip that gives me advantage on my uh, uh, check. Let me find out what the, that is. Holy shit! What is it? This is very important. I think it might be. Um, Oh shit, guys! Help me out here. Oh, I know what it is. It's uh, enhance ability. It's an actual spell. Spell. I'm definitely gonna do that whenever I have a big performance. Is this a big performance? Yeah, but more... I want the perception check first. If there's more than five people, he will definitely cast enhance ability because this is his reputation. This is his life, you know. Perception first, then uh, give me the performance with a, um, uh, advantage. I need the perception right. first. I will do perception first. Okay. And then go ahead and make your performance check. That is why I have to do enhance ability. Uh, for those at home, I rolled a crappy eight. Yeah. 25. If I can... Yeah, so you start spreading good cheer throughout the town. A lot of people are really excited about it. Um, a lot of people think that um, you coming through um, is um, also indicative of the benevolence of Lady Alcantara, which kind of cuts. No, 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 no. no, no. Even not if, you, yes. you're not, you're not saying anything against her, but a lot of the people seem to be celebrating now because of you. But they seem to be bringing up the fact that she won at Nadrasi. Oh, she got all those people back from the temple. Or from uh, Kasar, or Iskariyami. There seems to be a lot of cheer for her as well. And some people keep coming up to you and asking you to sing a song about her. Um, I do not sing that song anymore. <laughs> all right. That's off, it's off, that's off the set. Sorry. Fact, I owe money to somebody because, you know, he paid me to do it. I'm not doing it anymore. <laughs> it does seem that there are a lot of people in town that are very... Um, motivated uh, by the events of the last couple of days um, regarding the defense of the town. Um, you also notice in the process, too, that it doesn't look like Balthar has left based on his stuff still being around. Um, and, uh, yeah, um, it, it definitely feels like everyone is very motivated by you. You've got the town's morale up, but it does also seem that it's not just you and your singing that seems to be heightening it. It seems like it's kind of a multiplicative, a multiplicative matter of all the good things happening for the people in the town. That's great. If there's a pool party, um, I'm going to do a, a triple... You live on a beach. You live on a beach. Yeah. Why would you have a pool party? Yeah, pool party. We're going to go to the beach. Beach party, man. That's it. Beach party. Volleyball, let's do it. Uh... <laughs> It's like we'll it's like Tom Cruise. Everybody is like, "Oh, I can't wait for a beach episode." I'm like, "It's been this whole game." It's been this whole game. <laughs> so wait, basically, you're saying we live in an anime? Yes. Um, speaking of anime, <laughs> back to the keep. Balthar drops uh, the, the 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 block on you there, Dan. Um, Cyril. Oh damn it. <laughs> He walked away. Dan, do you have any response to that? Aramis is gobsmacked. He dropped the block on me. What did you say? He said, the Lord of Kasari Yanwi is dead. Oh! It's starting to make sense. <sighs> I promised him a long time ago. Explains why the lady had to run so quickly. Undoubtedly, she won't be visible for a day or two, if not more. What do you think will happen with the town? 
we will do everything we can to make sure that it's running full function. I promised her father a long time ago. What, uh, boons? I mean, excuse me, I know you and him are good friends, but will we notice his passing in the town? It doesn't seem that he was no. very present. He hasn't been present for some time. Lady Alcantara has ruled the town for quite a while, and you did not know him as well as Aramis and I did. No, no, I didn't. It's been said pleasantries and excusing myself before my crude comment, but... I know, of course, you are not only young for a human, but insanely young for an elf and a dwarf. That said... Will the people know? I'm sure it will be brought out. I will not be passing that information forward. It is all conscious you... will to determine when it's right to say so. Perhaps we should keep it a, a secret until war is passed? I do not think that it's my decision to make. What I do know is, is that Lady Alcantara has fought against us, even though we've been at her side, since her placement as regent for Kasari Yanwi. Many people in the town do not have faith in her, regard her as cold, standoffish, and not truly responsible for the success of this town. If we were to flee her now, with him dying. Right. It would be a death sentence. Aramis looks at Balthar and places his hand on his shoulder. It took this for you to make the right decision. You're not wrong. The gravity of this event is massive. What can we do to stabilize the town? Aramis uh, says, I have to go cancel a lunch appointment. <laughs> Steps away. Um, and uh, Balthar looks to you and says, To be honest, she's on an upswing. Her defense of Nadrasi was resplendent. And her ability to save most of the people that were sent to Iskari on way back from a more punishing fate was also very timely, especially thanks to her guildmaster. What she did with Leaf was unconscious, unconscionable, and her outing of our group is not ideal. But my promises to her father are more important at least for now. What are the aims of, uh... Why is the name so fucking stupid? <laughs> Foe Fighters? Because, because I named it after. <laughs> I can't take it seriously. They're, They're so awesome hard. Man. Screw you, man. Screw you. <laughs> this is just honestly the best part of the night so far, I think. You got to name your stupid boat. <laughs> I get to name my cool factor. Yeah, I just... <laughs> <laughs> he, um, he's a F A U X. I know. He's Foe fighters. It's a joke inside of a name. He says, Our aims are as they have always been the peace, well being, freedom, and liberty of all peoples. The reason why I was willing to act as rashly as I was was because of her. Infringing on the freedom and rights of a Correct. foe fighter. And he's not even active. But I have received word that Lefgren has made his way across the narrow. He's made his way to the Adam Dial with intents of killing the King of Dark Helm. I don't Wait, who has? Did not did I not go over this with you? I'm sorry, I had Jolly Ranch in my right mouth and it was hard to hear. He said, <laughs> he says, yes, a uh, foe fighter from Asnavel came up with the Korash ships. He was the one who had the map. 
Are you aware of the map? No. You are, I missed that session. You were out on your ship at the time, I suppose. He, uh... Yes. Yeah. Shakes his head. Um, do you know the stuff out of character, though? Uh, vaguely. Real quick. I kind of sped through... Real quick uh, synopsis. Um, so, uh, Lefgren, um, a foe fighter, came from Osnabel with a map, or, or rather, got a map from Balthar, um, and had intended to use the map to go to Darkhelm, the capital C, with, a, with an O, not with an A, like the actual building in Darkhelm, uh, where the king resides, and kill him if necessary. Leaf was like, no, 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 no. We're not going to kill anybody. We're going to talk to him. I'll go with you. And then Leaf was like, okay, uh, let's go. And then the guy had the map. Cyril saw the map and was like, uh, it's got my dad's mark on it. What the fuck are you doing with my dad's map? Right. And basically absconded with it after uh, Lefgren, the, the lad from Most Novel, made a duplicate of it and gave the original to Leaf. Leaf took the original with uh, Cyril to Lady Alcantara to basically uh, act as arbiter regarding this and matter. And then mind fuckery, yeah. And then, yes, if you want to call it that, um, she needed to know what he was hiding, if anything. She found out there was nothing truly malicious present, and Cyril did assist with um, uh, portending the, uh, the fates of it. Um, and uh, Leaf ever since that time has been basically um, negatively affected by the matter as one would ought to be uh, Lady Alcantara is obviously going through other shit besides that but also that seems to be weighing heavy uh, as well and as you haven't seen Cyril since you've gotten back you'd have no idea but speaking of Cyril <laughs> you walked away when I was trying to catch you and get you in on the game um, what is Cyril doing today? Like, you are still at the tower? So I had sent a message with, to, to Halo, um, mm -hmm. about information about the, yeah? Yeah. Um, I was trying to do research, um, but that was a dead end. Yeah. yeah. And so the message that was sent back to you was, um, I'm assuming from Halo through Alberic was, I won't have time today unless you come to meet with me. Because no, I told him I won't have time this morning, but I will meet you for lunch. Oh, that's the one. I yeah, I'm coming well, around noon one ish. Perfect. It's right around that time because Aramis is about to cancel his lunch appointment right now. That's perfect. Let's do that. Halo, you go to lunch at the uh, Tower of Lord. Cyril, you summoned me. Oh, and uh, one thing, I would have left my Twilight Guard at the temple telling him that like i'm concerned of the schism and i don't want to leave my people unguarded at this time i can make it across town he looks at you on my own. and he says since your groundskeeper is currently down i should be able to serve in that respect and i would greatly appreciate that nods, and you see him take off all his armor and start doing manual labor fuck okay. yeah uh, Cyril would greet Halo and ask his Twilight Mike to wait outside. Of course. Uh, thank you for meeting me. Uh, I felt like uh, I wanted this information uh, to, he to hear directly from you uh, without other ears. Of course. Um, before I give you the report, I want to let you know if you haven't heard the lord of the town has passed. Okay. Okay. Cyril sort of takes a moment to process that. Uh, okay. One, one more thing on El Contra's shoulders. Yes. Um, it seems she will be quite distracted for the next few days. Why are you smiling, John? <laughs> so what have you? Uh, and then so so Cyril, you you can see uh, you well. Um, I guess that Halo is a perceptive character, right? Mm -hmm. You can probably see that something's bothering Cyril. 
Well, um, I was able to pass a message along in the capital regarding our discovery of the Ancient Ones. I uh, was not able to meet with anyone directly as the War Queen and her enclave and both of the mages that we um, you, you told me of, they, they have moved on to the west coast in order to greet their adversaries, if you will. Mm. Cyril has a worried look. Oh, uh, I was hoping that Frederick the Untimely would get this message directly. I trust him, not so much the others. Unfortunately, I think it might be best that everyone in the uh, capital just know of the general things. No? Yes, absolutely. Um, um, and you know how that bureau bureaucracy works. It's impossible to directly contact him while he's not in town. Mm -hmm. Information seems to be a much sought after commodity and can be weaponized, as you know. I. Speaking of information, I, um had an interesting conversation with Leaf this morning. He has a very unique idea for countering the Ancient Ones, and I think you might be interested in joining us. He seems to think there's something to do with sound or music or something that might affect them. I, I, I believe there was something recalled they were... I, I, I'm not sure, but I think we should try and capture one of these creatures. So you can see, like, Cyril starts looking, as he's talking, he's, he's like shaking his head and he's looking through the papers on his big desk. There's papers everywhere, and he's shuffling through the papers. Um, sound, sounds, yeah. Um, and, and wasn't there... Wasn't there a mention of these things? Weren't they called dead notes? Yeah, that... Yeah, you're the one with the notes. <laughs> I'm just along for the ride. And so out of character, John, weren't, weren't, was, that, was that a name that we were, was used for them? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, you... Yeah, so, so uh, I, would be, I would be willing to think more about that. Uh, I've been researching... To, to no avail. I can't seem to find any connection. Actually, he's absentmindedly yeah. rubbing his shoulder. It seems as though um, we've exhausted all we can from the books and materials that we have at our disposal. I think that the only thing we can do is try to acquire one of these creatures to study it ourselves, no? <laughs> you see him kind of, like, without really being able to control it, recoil a little bit from, from you saying that. <laughs> I understand your that fear. is not something uh, I had thought about, especially after our last encounter. Um, and he sort of pauses for a second and he says, Halo, you're a spiritual advisor to many here, yes? That's what they tell me. <laughs> um, well, then I may need your advice. I'm happy to listen. You know that. I feel something is wrong with me. I, 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 I have d these dark visions of the creatures. It's gotten stronger since I returned from Iskara Yanui. I feel like they have some hold on I me. Feel like they... These visions, can you describe them for me? So, John, what would, what would they be like? Yeah, you just see them in their place of being, like, scurrying about, wandering about. Yeah, I, that's what I would describe. They call, they call to you to come home. That too? Uh, no. that, that sounds dope, but it's not... Yeah, they call to me yeah. to come home. Yeah, yeah didn't, like they, okay. didn't they... Yeah. Uh... Yeah. yeah, they did that. If I said that, then hell yeah. I mean, oh, that's pretty uh, awesome. That's, I like as, it. As a quick side question, John, was say. any of this inspired by uh, the the Lost in Space movie from the '90s with like uh, Matt LeBlanc and uh, Gary, what's his name, Oldman in it? No. 
God, so, I hope not. So real, 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 real quick, just laying it out on the table, just so you guys have a, 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 an inkling of my mentality. The schism um, is basically a, a, a really morbid combination of uh, xenomorphs, specifically from uh, series, uh, ser- the series um, uh, Alien uh, Labyrinth and also Alien uh, Song of the Spear. Um, it also takes influence from obviously the slippers from magic the gathering um it also takes a very heavy inspiration as most uh, old one creatures do um from one hp lovecraft and um another uh, reference that i don't want to put out too much but i'm gonna mention it just because um michael moorcock um and the black swords um specifically um through elric Ooh, I don't like that. Exclamation point included if you like. Um, Soul sucking swords. I don't. I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah, I think I do. But yeah, those are the inspirations that are most heavy for the schism. Right. So Sarah would sort of say, try to describe what he what he saw and the pull, and so he said, I, th- I think there's something wrong with me. Is this only when you're trancing, or does this happen while you're conscious? Trancing. Okay, so I'd say that. That is concerning, to say the least. So I'm not sure if Halo would know this, but Hale, but but Zero would say a troubling thing my research has revealed is that these ancient ones, schisms, dead notes, whatever you call them. They come from us, the elves. How so? Um, and then I would describe what I learned, which is that their pieces, um, um, there's segments, oh god, I'm trying to find my notes. Of the one wood. Yeah, the, um, right, right. They're, 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 the, the, the goddess of the one wood is the source of the creatures. Kishayathea. So every elf would know that before the War of Sword and Serpent, before time really, um, and more literal than, uh, than actually just saying it like I just said it, um, but before time, the world was covered with forest. And that forest was known as the one wood. Um, and uh, basically Fey and the Fey Wild was here. There was no material plane, there was no segments. And something separated those two things. And so Sarah would say, I, I, I wonder if the fact that I'm only sensing this when I'm trancing, you know, my connection to the Fey Wild, to the Fey, uh, is part of what's going on. Would my religious knowledge grant me any more insight into that if you want to basically give him like a full kind of spiritual look over and physical look over i'll go ahead and let you roll um a medicine check a religion check and an arcana check um the uh religion check will be made with advantage um the other two will be straight um zach um uh, i can give you the 16 plus your bonus for that if you want not with the one he has advantage for. Yeah. Okay. So, wisdom, or you want medicine? Medicine, religion, and arcana. For a full spiritual overlook. And physical overlook. Why don't you hang on to those, Andy? We'll just see what I roll. You Alrighty. Know. Yellow. Nothing on medicine. 11. Oh wow, this is not going. Damn. Well at all. Can I replace them? Not if you see them. Well, the Arcana was all right. It was a uh, four, eleven, and seventeen for medicine, religion, Arcana. So you're focusing in. I mean, what he says has religious connotations, but you're not really it's not clicking other than what he's told you. Um, the Arcana check um, was pretty much dependent on the religion check being successful. Um, but what you're kind of gleaning here is, is basically what he's describing seems to be like some kind of tether, some kind of connection. 
you don't know what's causing it um, and why it's him versus anyone else. Uh, but you do know his father, based on that arcana roll, um, his father was known for this specific line of inquiry. Well, I also know he got stabbed by a schism. I was there when that happened. Yeah, but looking him over, it doesn't seem like that matters. Okay. I mean, the wound has still got a scar, but it doesn't seem to be problematic. Mm -hmm. And religiously, you don't think there's anything other than, like, demons that can enter in through, like, uh, or archfey or, you know, um, really powerful tricksters who can enter yeah. into a fey while they're trancing. It seems, without further study, I won't be able to... I, I, I can't... I can't place anything off the top of my head, but I may be able to reference some materials back at the temple and um, perhaps convey with some other priests at the capital. They, they, may, they may have more knowledge on this. I... <laughs> unfortunately spent most of my focus on the bright star and not on the uh the other gods the the difficulties of speciality that would be appreciated and if we can help each other with our research that, that uh, i would be willing for any help uh, just like i'd be willing for help from leaf uh, uh, real quick sorry um uh, can you roll me a d100 there andy sure Nine. Yeah, so as you're talking and discussing, a loud magical boom appears in the back of the room. Um, and uh, you see your father appear in, in the room. What? And he doesn't really look at you, doesn't seem too terribly concerned. And he walks over and he grabs the map and starts rolling it up looking at you. And he kind of gives you like a, it's an almost like Harrison Ford like <laughs> smile. And he's rolling up the paper. And Wait, what are you doing? Dude, he, your uh, dad's Harrison Ford. Takes the paper, puts it into his robe, closes up his robe and says, No time to talk. Kid. <laughs> Gone. Gotta say kid. Fudge. You don't see that? You're named after the dog. And that <laughs> is where we'll end the session. I will state, though, I do feel like the funerals will be a very solid point for um, role-playing. Uh, but I also feel like they could be skipped over. And it's entirely up to you. We'll discuss that off-screen as to what we're going to do with that. Otherwise, next session is going to be another funeral episode. And uh, we'll get we'll get into that. Oh, actually, I, I uh, do... I have uh... something. <laughs> what do you I, have? I wait, have... just wait, wait, wait. <laughs> Hold on. Okay. I mean, like five minutes. I want just my five minutes. Go. Um, I would love just to, to see what I could remember of the map so I can try to draw as much of it as possible. I was studying that thing like you would not believe. Okay. Go ahead. Make me a intelligence check straight. Uh, I'm going going to just use the 16 and add my five. So that would be 21. You're able to copy to a pretty fair um, uh, assessment of accurate. Um, the map out on paper based off of notes you have on other parchment. Aren't you glad I saved you that roll? Oh, yeah. <laughs> and, uh... Jeez, Dad. <laughs> so, the father rolls have been great. Um, uh, you guys keep rolling under 20. Uh... <laughs> was, what's funny is, it's like, I'm gonna start this gimmick, and I'm gonna go with it. It's gonna last a couple of sessions, and then, you know, they'll pop in. Or they'll do their thing, and it'll. But no, it all happened right, away. right now. Fuck. Okay. Anyways, <laughs> thanks what for watching. John, we're just lucky. Yeah, just lucky. Um, we're gonna go ahead and end the session there. Thanks for watching. Pick up next Friday. Okay. Have a good one. <laughs>